nagyon érdekes dologról lesz most szó. Milyen cég az, amelyik transzparensen vállalja az adatait, még a kevésbé kedvezőeket is, csak azért, hogy elindítson egy öztársadalmi kezdeményezést, amely a sokszínűségről, az egyenrangúságról, a befogadásról szól. Ezt tette a Tesco. Több év előkészítés után 2021 nyarán kiadták ezeket az adatokat, ehhez a mértföldkőhöz érkeztek. Azért írták alá egykor a sokszínűségi kartát, hogy a cég működése és vállalati kultúrája tükrözze az általuk kiszolgált közösségek és vásárlók sokszínűségét. Ez egy családbarát munkahely, az év munkáltatója, most díjakat sorolok, és az elért eredményekről most a cég két képviselője fog beszélni. Let me turn to Ila Golab, the CE People Director of Tesco, and Banu Yesel, the CE Product Director of Tesco. Both of them are mothers and leaders of change at the company. Please welcome them both. I am Ella, and today on the stage is Banu with me, and uh, she will tell you a story which is very personal, but also universal, about what does it mean to be a daughter, a girl, a wife, a mother, a manager, and I believe you can see yourself uh, in that story. And we have selected a title for our... Sorry? We have selected a title to our presentation and to our story, which is Courage to be Significant. And Oprah Winfrey, in one of the big, said, don't worry about being successful. Work hard to be significant, and the success will naturally follow. So sometimes when you are full of doubts, offer fully yourself to the world and we wish you that and if you anytime think you are not important or your actions are of no significance ask for help seek support and engage and then we could create a better life for all girls together thanks Zola. so i'm so happy to be here today in this special day and able to share my story with you. I'm going to start with the first chapter of my life. You can see some photos. So I was born in this lovely little town called Seferisar, which is located in the western part of Turkey. My mother is a teacher. My father is an accountant. And they were well-educated individuals. My mother was still is perfectionist. She always wanted me to be perfect. In an environment where women are not allowed to shine properly. My father worked really hard to reach the standards that, that, that he has, so he was very explicit about his hopes, me earning my money after 18. Growing in a small town in Turkey, brought lots of challenges into my life. There is a phrase in Turkish, if you have a daughter, you have a problem. <laughs> Reflects the perspective of Turkish society around the female figure. Woman needs to be protected, rules around what you can do, what you can wear, where you can go is defined by society. What others think of you is so important. If you are a man, you are lucky. You are free. None of those rules were valid for my brother. I still feel myself very lucky because I had a reach to education. My parents were passionate about my education. I studied business administration at university and I was working really hard to earn the money to live the life that I want so that's why I only went to university to attend my exams. And I graduated in 2002 with an honors degree. After my graduation, I decided I need to move to a corporate company because I thought that the culture 
will be much better than the ones that I experienced during the university. I started at Tesco as a store manager assistant. Early in my career, I worked in fairly male-dominated fields. There weren't many strong female role models. And women who are senior to me were leading in a way that wasn't very authentic. They were trying to survive in a man's world. I didn't want to approach my leadership with that mindset, and my journey was a difficult one. Again, another expression in Turkish, don't interfere with the, with the man's work with a dough in your hand. So this statement is clearly defines that women should stay away from the man's job. Instead, they should go and be mothers or housewives. So our roots are very strong and our boundaries may be very limiting to us. Our beliefs and assumptions and this, in the society when we agree could create a sticky floor for us, which is more important than a glass ceiling. And when I advise women, I am always encouraging them to start with I space and really look into what you believe in, what is important to you, who you are, what feelings you have, what needs you want uh, to, to, to fulfill. And we could do it within organization through mentoring, through coaching, through training, but also through the safety networks. The second thing which I would like to point out, that the women are the most powerful when they lead from their heart, when they are able to connect their personal purpose with the higher purpose of the organization they are working for. So, we can create organization like that when the purpose matter and the colleagues and employees take full responsibility to contribute from their personal space and personal work to a higher purpose. And within these organizations, which are a little bit Turkish in the current world, you could motivate others not through the fear from about punishment, not about the promising reward, but really linking your own passions, your own responsibilities to meet the higher goals. Even it was tough, I decided to build a career in operations. So I wanted to be that black ship in operations and want to show everyone that lady can be successful in a male dominant environment. So I work with different, in different positions in operations and I appointed as operations development manager and joined the senior management team. If we turn our uh, direction to my private life, in that days, I met with my first boyfriend at the age of 18. And then I introduced him to my family because that's the rule. And then uh, what others think pressure came to the picture. And then the question, when are you going to get married? I thought, it's a very good idea. I can escape from all of that rules, and I decided to get married. I got engaged at the, age, at the age of 19 and got married at the age of 21. At the middle of my career, another question came. When are you planning to have a kid? A simple answer to that question was, we were waiting for the right time, and I was pregnant at the age of 25, and I gave a birth to my miracle Jemre. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to go back to work only, of only when she was six months old, because that's the maximum break that you can get in Turkey. I was working really hard to build the career that I want while sitting there and judging myself if I am a great mom to my child. So I was building a career, but at the same time, something was missing. I wasn't truly really happy. 
probably I wasn't the bounder that I wanted to be due to the rules and limitations. And in 2013, I have been offered to join Central Europe Operations Development Team as program manager. Wow, amazing opportunity to escape from all of those. It's exciting, but at the same time so scary. I left my parents, my friends, my colleagues behind, and I started my new chapter. I moved to Hungary with my family. New country, new culture, new people, new job. And as you can imagine, my mind was getting crazy. But I welcomed so in, in a, such a nice way in Tesco. I forget about that mind talk, because everyone was there to help, and my company offered me a cultural training to understand the dynamics of the country that I am going to live in. So it was, it was a different culture. I first, for the first time probably in my life, I, I felt valuable, taken care of. What a great feeling, what a different culture. With that excitement, I started in my new role. I was struggling a lot. Imagine five countries, five different cultures, 30 projects to be deployed in one year. Uh, but I didn't ask for help because I thought that it's a weakness to ask for a help. So I was trying to do myself. And then at the end of two months of struggle, I went into my line manager's room and I told, sorry you have to find a new program manager because I'm not capable of doing this job. <laughs> he was shocked and he told me, come on, Banu, if you are not capable, I wouldn't pick you. You are more than capable, more than brave. Just ask for help. We are going to help you to settle down. And now I need to call out the name, the guy who is sitting next to me, Martin Coulomb. He is an amazing leader. I will be grateful forever for his support, for challenging me, stretching me, inspiring me to be at my best. I will never, without him, I won't be the person who I am today. In 2018, I was his successor. I appointed as business support and online director, and he handed over his plaque and his amazing to me proudly after working for five years shoulder to shoulder. When I meet her woman as a coach or as a trainer or as a line manager, what is really universal, there are needs. And very often these needs are not met. Therefore, we make our lives very difficult. In nowadays, you know, there is no boundaries between uh, work from home and being at home, and there are no balance at all. So what is the help we can offer women in such a situations where they need to juggle with different priorities and with this willingness to be perfect in everything? We can offer flexibility, and I think many companies are already doing it. And it could be through uh, a great line managers who are in their serving role of helping people to be at their best through selecting shifts, through choosing the hours uh, to work with. It could be through the phased return to job after maternity or after long sickness where you could start a little bit slower. And I, I think I can be proud. We have recently uh, asked 20,000 of our colleagues about their opinion, how they value their flexibility at Tesco, and they said, 83% of them said, we could, we are able to live uh, our lives with the flexibility at work, which was a great achievement, but it is a tribute to the line managers who are making it uh, possible for 78% of our women. I learned a lot in that five years, but more importantly, I found myself my true self. As I found myself, I just realized that I'm not walking in the same path with my husband. When my need was him taking care of me, he was asking why you didn't unpack your luggage, why the dinner is not ready. 
Even we tried hard, at the end of the day, our kid encouraged us to make the decision by asking or saying, something is wrong in this house, where is your love? At the age of 11. So, and he's amazing that, by the way, just we couldn't walk in the same way uh, as a couple. So our new journey started, we moved to new house, and again, me trying to be perfect in everything. I want to be a perfect leader, I want to be a perfect mom, I want to be a perfect friend, I want to be a perfect cook, everything. It's so tiring. Then I attended a training called Leading with Purpose. The training that changed my life. For three days, nonstop, we worked on our values, our fears, our beliefs, our, our childhood traumas. And during that training, I have seen two versions of me, version A and version B. Version A is born at her best, version B, you don't want, you don't want to know. So after the training, we agreed with Allah that you need to take some post-coaching session to understand what takes you from your version A to version B, what turns your good day to a bad day, and avoids you being at your best. After the coaching sessions, I truly connect with myself. I understand my triggers. I understand that I don't need to be perfect. I am good enough. And I can also fail on the way, but if I learn from it, it's not a failure anymore, but it is a learning. Elle always tells me, Bonnie, you have endless empathy for the people around you. Can you please use half of it for yourself? Then you are going to be unstoppable. I'm so lucky as I'm working in a company that supports my development journey and accepts me for who I am. I'm so lucky that I work with the managers who inspired me, developed me, and gave a constructive feedback. Never forget, feedback is the breakfast of the champions. So, in 2020, September, I have been asked to attend the meeting with urgency, and I have been offered to be a product strateg commercial strategy and transformation director. And my first response, are you sure? I'm not a commercial expert. I don't know how to buy and sell and trade products. I didn't plan a career in product in commercial. And I'm an operations lady. I am there for 18 years. And then my boss told me, Bonu, there is no challenge that you cannot jump into. Just bring your toolkit and you will be amazing. And I decided it's a good idea. I moved to commercial, and at the end of three months, our strategy around how to transform the commercial department was ready. I received another call saying, everything is in a good setup, product strategy and transformation, and your team is going to deliver that plan. Are you ready for a new challenge? And I have been appointed as Central Europe Commercial Director. And today, I have a privilege to be in service to more than 350 commercial colleagues and more than 7 million customers in a week. I love what I am doing in product, even I thought at the beginning it will be very difficult, and I love being outside of my comfort zone. Because I know very well from my boss that I can grow and develop if I am outside of my comfort zone. And more importantly, I have a young lady, I think you see the picture in the previous slide, at home who wants to study medicine and who wants to save lives. She's making me proud every day. So what else I can ask for? We can learn from the Banu story, also um, how we can support other women within our organization. And I think assisting uh, women on their journey is very important. And whether you are at the beginning of your career or whether you are just change a job or you are promoted, it is important to support you with induction and onboarding, but not finishing very early, but really assisting women at the first stage of, of that new job, of the new challenge. 
And again, one program will not fit all. So therefore, it's so important to create a bespoke development plans which are tailored to your need. In these bespoke development plans, there are two roles. One is your sponsors who could create a challenge, who will offer you a feedback. But the most important is you take your responsibility on your own about your learning. And I would encourage all women to, to think about your learning beyond the organization. Because many of you are very active and you do different roles. You are sitting at the boards at the schools or in kindergartens. You are championing in volunteering. You do your, your work in a sport club or you are supporting a church or charity organization. You learn how to be the leader in a different field. And these skills are very transferable. And very rarely I see on LinkedIn profiles that you talk about these experiences as well. So I would encourage you to always ask for help, create your safety net, which will be cheering you up for tomorrow. And tomorrow you can take a risk to be significant. I want to finish with a quote. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning how to sail my ship. So please be brave, believe in yourself. My dreams came true and I have many more of them to achieve. So I think we have a strong power inside of us. Sometimes we don't realize it, but believe in that strong power and make your dreams real. Happy Women's Day. Happy Women's Day, thank you.